All right, guys, I was scrolling through TikTok on my bed. And, uh, I saw the preview to this video about the Internet's most obvious in industry plant. So we're going to react to it. And, uh, you know, seems to be a good video. Let's check it out. Recently, a group by the name Ghost Kids took the music. Ghost Kids, bruh. <laughs> I mean, you'd think it's like uh, some, I don't know what kind of music this is. So. World by surprise when they posted on their Instagram a Rolling Loud Miami flyer with their name on it. Even Rolling Loud themselves were surprised. Then Rap TV followed up with post. I know, right? They have like, when their name, their name is like one of the biggest out of like, all these artists here, like, you know what I mean? Bigger than Trippy Red, bigger than Lil Durk, bigger than Lil Yachty. Like, what is going on? Same size font as, like, 21 Savage, Uzi, Kodak. What is, like, come on now. Bigger than Coyla Ray, Ski Mask. What is, yo. Posting promo for them, saying they forced their way into the... I just don't understand. And who even owns this rap handle, guys? Like... Is it the industry lineup? At first, people thought this was just poor marketing from some random group with fake followers. But then, Ghost Kids released their second song ever with a Vince Stables feature. And what was even more Vince Stables, who's that? More surprising is that a few days later, they actually showed up at Rolling Loud opening for Lil Uzi Vert. On top of all of that, Rolling Loud was reposting their appearance, seemingly co-signing the group, who was standing on stage while their animated music video played in the background. Many fans were bro, like. Literally came out of left field, bro. We don't know who they are or anything, man. Anyone heard of Ghost Kids? Let me know in the comments below. We're angry, but I was curious. All of this had left me wondering. Who are the Ghost Kids? How did they get all of these industry connections? Why do they have all of these followers? And how do... You know, right, this came out of... <clears throat> how do they have all of this money for promo? Well, I think I may have figured it out. So let's look into it. All right, all right. Detective is on it, guys. Oh, we, 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 we removed the sidebar somehow on the bottom of the screen. Let's go. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. I'm very pleased to say that this video is sponsored by Manscaped. I've been using the Performance Package 4.0 ever since they... Yeah, Manscaped is sponsoring non-RuneScape streamers? I did not know. Sent it to me back in April, and I absolutely love everything included. So let's take a look at it, shall we? First off here, we got the Lawnmower 4.0, which is a very nice electric trimmer that comes with a little light on the top to help you aim if you're in a dim area. It also has a very nice blade designed to reduce nicks and cuts. It comes with a wireless charging dock and has 90 minutes of use, and it's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. Manscaped also recently added the Weed Whacker 2.0 to the performance package. It's basically just a nose and ear hair trimmer i actually need a nose and ear hair trimmer guys man ain't got no money for manscaped what you mean guys let me put this uh stuff on my face try to know one with a steel blade and a powerful motor to cleanly cut through everything you need to and finally, in the performance <laughs> package, you get two of my favorite products, the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver. The Crop Reserver is a ball to I just wonder how much they're making for ad sponsors, guys. Quite a bit, right? Toner lotion that you can just kind of put on after you get out of the shower and you'll smell nice and clean throughout the rest of the day. And the Reviver is a little spray bottle that you can put on whenever you're in a rush or in a hurry and you don't have time to apply the lotion. Both of them smell fantastic. I use them both regularly and I absolutely love them. Manscaped was even generous enough to throw in two free gifts with the Performance Package 4.0, the Shed Travel Bag and the Ant. Oh snap, bro. You feel like I'm getting stuff for free at this point, right guys? I ain't got no money for this. Tight chafing boxers. I'm about to take a trip soon, so I'm very excited to test out the travel bag. It is super nice and sleek, and I actually really like the boxers. They're super comfortable. Uh, actually, I think I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> nice old Manscaped boxers. Okay. So make sure to head over to manscaped.com right now to get 20. Yo, I got Mac Miller's like um, first album or whatever on the on the wall there. That, that's an automatic like for me, guys percent off and Matt Miller uh, I'm a huge fan of Mac Miller guys 
free international shipping when you use code MADDIEB at checkout. I repeat, that is 20% off free international shipping at manscaped.com with code MADDIEB. This is a very good deal. I'm a big fan of the performance package. And with that being said, let's hop back into the video. First, I think it's important to establish the timeline. So like I said, on July 1st, Ghost Kids posted on their Instagram saying they were in LA with Vince Staples. At this point, no one really knew about them since they hadn't bought any promo yet, despite having over a million followers. I'm going to assume that some of these followers are bots and some of their comments even look botted, but I'll touch more on that later. Their next post was a couple of days later, which had a picture of Miami with the caption, ready or not, we coming. Following that, they released their song, Ha Ha. You know, I, I, I do like, uh, I do like the picture they have here though. How do you even make that, guys? Oh, I kind of know how, but. Like a uh, on July 6th. Then on July 14th, they posted a picture of themselves photoshopped onto the Rolling Loud lineup, with Rolling Loud acting all confused in the comments. This was also promoted by Rap TV and it was obviously paid promo since they were tagged in the post, bringing a lot of attention to their account. People were surprised that this account had over a million followers, but not nearly as many likes per post. Guys, eight comments, 25k, uh, 25k likes. Like, what is going on, bro? How many, how many accounts actually do this? Then, Ghost Kids kept posting Polaroid pictures of cities on their way to Miami. But what was even more surprising was on July 21st when they released their song, Going Off, featuring Vince Staples. People, including myself, were very confused as to how this random group got a Vince Staples feature. It just screamed industry plant to most people. Maybe it's, uh, maybe an investor just like randomly pumped in a bunch of money into their like business pitch or something, guys. I have no clue. At first, I just assumed it was like a stolen verse from an already made song, but Vince reposted it just backing the fact that it was a real collaboration. That same day, they posted a picture of a- And I do like the name G Ghost Kids, like- A seasoned assist from Rolling Loud with the caption, ripped up the rules, we coming. Then on- What the heck? <laughs> Yeah, bro. They're breaking all the rules here. On July 23rd at Rolling Loud Miami. Well, fans were waiting for Little Uzi Vert. It's a cool little promotion pick, man. They got they got some things right with their promotion. To come out, the screen started flashing the ghost. I didn't know Roll Rolling Loud has become such a big festival recently. Like, like one of the biggest ever, man kid's name and showed footage of animated characters on the rolling loud security footage breaking into the control room then a bunch of guys in masks and white jumpsuits came out started dancing and throwing out t-shirts i'm not gonna lie i thought this was a pretty cool and creative debut and i, <laughs> I know right was this pixar bro Straight up animation i do think their song with vince is pretty solid but i can also understand why fans at the concert were upset I don't know what kind of music they even have, guys. Rolling Loud even reposted the event on their Instagram, and Rap TV posted even more promo for them, so it was clear they were backed by people in the industry, or at least they were paying for it. You know, that style of art that reminds me of is like a gorillas, bro. For it. But other than that, no one really knew anything about them, so as the curious guy I am, I decided to do some digging. First, I checked out their website, which didn't have much information or anything, although it did look really nice, so I knew there had to be some money behind this group. After Definitely, guys. Through Google searches, all I was really able to come up with was a few articles. The interesting thing is that most of these articles were just copy and pasted with the same story. Regardless, it did give us a little bit of it. What the heck, bro? Probably paying for uh, some search engine optimization as well, guys. Insight. Firstly, I learned that a company named Super Plastic was behind Ghost Kids. They weren't really hiding it at all, and they made it pretty apparent. Super Plastic is a design studio that creates animated celebrities, vinyl toys, and digital collectibles. Their digital celebrity characters include Janky, Doogiemon, Daisy, and now the Ghost Kids, Phil- I don't even know who any of those are. Kathy and Lil Ill. They sell figurines, merch- Whoa, okay. You know, when it has a white background like that, it's, you know, going to be some expensive store. That's what I've kind of noticed. Merchandise, clothes, and NFTs. NFTs of all things, though, snap. Super Plastic has collaborated with Fortnite, getting their own skins. Oh, snap. Paris Hilton, Gucci, and more. They also had a collab series with Gorillaz. So I'd assume despite... Oh, that's what I... See what I mean? Gorillaz? Many people... Gorillaz of all things? Saying that they're copying gorillas. Gorillas must be cool with whatever they're doing since they've worked together, or maybe not. I don't know. Super Plastic is also working on a collab with Amazon, which is pretty crazy. So we now know that. Dang, bro. Came out of left. Oh, well, now we know. That's a, that should be the video, right, guys? 
and uh, he's, he's got some more info. A company is behind this group. And the article also states that Ghost Kids are partnered with Universal Music Group, Subdivisions, Virgin Records, and United Music Group. The chief creative officer for Super Plastic said, We've been developing the Ghost Kids for a long time. There is so much thought and expertise poured into the group from creatives and partners. We make stories with people we respect and love. We've been creating the Ghost Hey, bro. So they got like some billionaires backing them or something, guys. Animated, just animated avatars of all things. Those kids' music, narrative. Looks like they made so much money off their animations they can branch out into music. ...and identity with the industry's most raw and talented people. So it's clear that Super Plastic has a big budget behind this project, especially since they're partnered with a major label. A lot of people have also speculated that this was some sort of NFT project, and I was concerned about that too because anytime an NFT project has tried to take a dive into the music industry... Well, if, if, if it was, like, he could have made a very, uh, you know, even a bigger, like, kind of video on it. Probably, maybe would have got more views. It hasn't always gone well, but as far as I'm aware, after researching the Ghost Kids, they aren't selling any NFTs or related in any way. Thank goodness, bro. At least yet. But what really stuck out to me... He said yet. ...me about this article is when they said, It's worth noting that the artists behind the personas of Lil Ill and Filthy are prominent hip-hop figures who have chosen to remain anonymous for the time being. What the heck? The creation of Ghost Kids involved a collaboration with a committee of hip-hop legends, ensuring a promising future for the project with their collective expertise. Yeah, bro, the mystery representatives for this. What? So firstly, I'm obviously curious about who the hip-hop legends in question so some huge hip-hop artists have backed it up then okay okay but i'm more so curious as to who the prominent hip-hop figures are that voice the ghost kids when i read that line it instantly reminded me of captain murphy if you aren't familiar with captain murphy he was an animated rapper who came out of nowhere and had his music featured on adult swim he released his debut album duality with features on it from artists like earl sweatshirt no one knew who it was and i'm sure at the time a lot of people were throwing around the industry plant phrase however after weeks of people speculating speculating whether or not it was Earl or Tyler with pitched down vocals, the producer Flying Lotus revealed it was him. He's a very talented and well-connected producer in the music industry, explaining how he got on Adult Swim and got those features. Hey bro, made a, a song with Kendrick of all. So you maybe know? it's possible something similar is going on here. But I really, really wanted to know who the artists were that were behind Ghost King. Of all the rappers. It's so I had to dig a little deeper. First, I began by checking their Instagram following to see if I could find anything out of the ordinary. But they were just following a ton of popular artists. I was looking for prominent artists, but the rappers they followed didn't have similar voices to Ghost Kids, and none of them followed Ghost Kids back. Also, after looking more into their Instagram, I realized that the account was repurposed after previously being owned by Super Plastic's character Googiemon. So that's oh, snap, bro. That's some good, good digging he did right there, guys. Probably why they had so many followers. Although I still wouldn't be surprised. Straight up, just uh, deleted the brand and went, decided to go with something new. Surprised if some. Hey, that saves money, guys. Some of them were botted. Anyways, I saw some fans theorizing that Ghost Kids was Vince Staples, but that wouldn't really make sense for them to be anonymous and then feature who they actually are. Another person theorized it was AI, which isn't too far fetched these days, but AI doesn't sound that good yet. Mm. There's a ton of AI songs. I saw another person on Twitter comparing Lil Ill to Ice Cold Bishop, and while I can kind of see it, I didn't see anything connecting the two. By the way, Ice Cold Bishop is super fire. You guys should check him out. But other than I don't know who it is. And all of those dead ends, I couldn't find out anything else about the Ghost Kids on Instagram or Twitter. So I decided to go undercover in Super Plastics Discord server. Not really, I just kind of joined it. But I started <laughs> asking around about the Ghost Kids, and I learned a little bit more about them. Apparently, uh -oh. the Ghost Kids lore is that they are trying to save humanity from three-headed demons and zombies while simultaneously... Dang, you actually got a lore for it. Okay. Did somebody message it, or what the heck? How do you get this information? ...becoming the greatest rap duo of all time. This is a little bit interesting since there aren't too many artists that are kind of creating their own universe, and it does help explain some of their lyrics, but... Might as well call it a Steven Other universe with all this, um... Animation going on that it seemed like the people in the discord were also oblivious to their identities at this point I had hit a dead end until I realized that 
thing. Even the Discord insiders don't know who it is. I hadn't checked the most obvious spot, Genius.com. Their page looked empty with little information, so I had glossed over it before. But when checking over their first song, Haha, ha, I noticed there were some producers listed. The producers were Developed, who's worked on songs like Rap God, Rich Forever, K-Pop, and more. The other okay. producer was Cappy, who's worked a lot with Dominic Fike, Justin Bieber, and others. So it's Dang, Justin Bieber, what? It's already pretty crazy that they're working with big name producers like this. But when I scrolled down, I saw even more interesting information. A lone contributor who suspiciously knows all of this information about Ghost Kids listed two names. Yo, Smash Ultimate in the writing credits, Dougie F and Eric Jamal. After further investigation, I realized that Eric Jamal is this guy who I've seen blowing up all over TikTok because of this freestyle and others. And Dougie F is an artist. Got a Game Boy shirt on. Okay, okay, that's cool. Artist who has a might be that guy, I don't know. Track on the 2K17 soundtrack with Pitbull and also used to tour a lot with Travis Scott. So then I went back to the Ghost Kids Instagram and I noticed they were following both Dougie F and Eric Jamal. I checked their Instagrams and saw that they were both following back the Ghost Kids. However, I couldn't find any other information connecting them. Oh, snap, that may, might be them, guys. ...to the Ghost Kids, so I decided to listen to their music and see if I noticed any similarities. First off, let's compare Dougie F and Filthy. Pay attention to the ad-libs. Yeah. To me, Phil. Yo, I actually like the music video, guys. He really just sounds like Dougie F pitched down. Also, I noticed the two cars from both music videos are pretty similar. I know it isn't the same, but it's pretty close. Now let's compare Lil Ill and Eric Jamal. I can see a pretty big similarity. Yo, he actually found out who it is, I think, guys. It doesn't it say the lyrics on the ha ha. Filthy really small. I can see a pretty big similarity, especially. Totally sounds like them, guys. He actually found out. Since Eric Jamal is super. This guy is super good at the, what he's doing here, guys. Not gonna lie. Super talented when it comes to his vocal range. Also, if you look at some of the lyrics on the ha ha, Filthy says, spend some months in Japan. And here are some pictures of Dougie F in Japan. On top of that, on the song Going Off, Lil Ill says, Ghost Kids taking road trips doing showbiz all around the world. Which is really interesting as Dougie F travels a lot, according to his Instagram. And Eric Jamal was just on tour this past year. With all of this information that I found, I am fairly certain that the identity of the Ghost Kids is Eric Jamal and Dougie F. So the two well done, bro. I'm actually thoroughly convinced as well. Prominent hip hop figures aren't quite what I expected. I kind of expected them to be Vince Stable's level of popularity. However, this is pretty interesting what's going on here. And I don't make this video to hate on Ghost Kids or anything. I think it's a pretty neat idea. I do think, though, that by most definitions, they qualify for the term industry plant. However, it is a whole different thing. We don't typically see NFT slash figurine companies dive into the music industry with an animated rap duo who makes their debut at Rolling Loud by staging a break-in so this is definitely in a category of its own <laughs> again i do think it's pretty cool and i did like their song with vince stables so this isn't hate or anything and i know some people are going to comment oh this is paid promo it is not paid promo i just thought this was a neat story the only paid promotion in here is from my friends over at manscaped but yeah other than that i found this story facts bro facts super interesting and i hope you guys did too i hope you enjoyed please make sure to leave a like if you did and uh yeah it's been many balls and i'll see you guys next time Eddie Balls. The absolute irony gr Gorillaz was initially made to criticize the music industry as a parody of, on artificial bands. I doubt Ghost Kids understood that, though. Just wanted to rip the aesthetic. Oh, snap. What? Gorillaz looks different. The super plastic animation art style gave it away. Not surprising for a company to try that to profit off hip hop. They're basically trying to make hype beast Funko Pop. Pops into them. <laughs> he said Funko Pops. Well, th these comments are interesting, bro. They had to know that Gorilla's comparisons are going to haunt them for the rest of the- For the entirety of their career. Straight rip off. I know, right? That it? Pretty much. Well, their whole hidden identity gimmick didn't last long. Well, with them following each other on t um instagram and you know i'm just finding out through whoever uploaded whoever whatever soft puppet account he made the uh, thing with posted the lyrics on or whatever it could have done a better job it looks like they wanted to be found
All right, guys, that's the video. Thank you for watching. Check out the original video description. See you guys next one. Peace out. Like, comment, subscribe. I do all my reactions live on Twitch later.